I'm Brian Jackson. Welcome to In Focus. My guest is Al Kurtz, Chairman of the Champaign County Board. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, <clears throat> as you can tell from my accent, I am not uh, originally from the Midwest. I was born in Brooklyn, New York. I grew up there. Uh, got into the uh, retail business uh, after uh, college at NYU and uh, spent 22 years in retail management which brought me through Washington, D.C. to Champaign-Urbana uh, in 1979 when I was asked to uh, take over the Bergner's Department Store as general manager. Uh, I spent a couple of years and 22 years in retail and uh, actually sort of got burned out. Um, we spend all our time during Christmas away from our families because we're working seven days a week. And I decided that uh, I had an entrepreneurial spirit, as my dad did, and I opened up a restaurant franchise here in 1981, <coughs> excuse me, called Blimpy Subs and Salads, and uh, stayed in the franchising business here in Champaign and had my first store on 4th and Green for 11 years. Um, after uh, being in business for 11 years, I, I was able to get into a home-based business uh, opportunity uh, in the network marketing field, and I had been in that area for 22 years now. I sold my restaurant franchise in 1992, and I've been an entrepreneur and, and business uh, developer since then. Okay. Um, Would you like my history of politics? <laughs> if you want. <laughs> well, about five years ago, um, I was asked uh, to be appointed to a vacating seat on the county board. Ms. Karen Moline, who was the District 7 representative, was leaving the state. And so <clears throat> the Democratic Party needed to find a replacement, and uh, I was um, asked to be appointed. I, I thought it over. I had time. I was sort of semi-retired, uh, and I decided that uh, after living in Champaign-Urbana and loving it, uh, I felt this was an opportunity to give back to the community and, and have a say in, uh, in governance. And... Uh, Took that appointment, was re-elected in 2010, re-elected in 2012, and then uh, elected to the county board chair this past year. So I've had five years on the county board, and I'm running for re-election uh, here um, next year. What is the responsibility of the chair of the Champaign County Board? Well, uh, by statute, uh, the, the, the chair is the responsible chief elected official in, uh, in any county. Um, uh, that entails uh, quite a bit of responsibility, uh, not only being uh, the chair of the county board, but you also automatically become a board member of the Champaign-Urbana Public Health District. Uh, you become the chair of the policy board of the Workforce Investment Act, become a member of the board and chair of the Public Aid Appeals Board. Um, you uh, oversee the agenda for the uh, county board. Uh, you work with all of the county board deputy chairs, uh, from facilities, from highway, from uh, environment and land use, from, for finance, and you, you plan out the governance, uh, financial, budgeting, as well as policy. Uh, so there's quite a bit when you're talking about a $130 million budget a year. What is going on now with the Champaign Public, Champaign-Urbana Public Health District? What's well, about two years ago, um, we received a lot of public pressure to uh, develop a, an inspection plan with transparency. Mm -hmm. uh, when an inspector goes into a, a restaurant or a food service facility in Champaign-Urbana, uh, he's checking for a number of things. But the key is the safety of the consumer, uh, the safety of their families, of their children who come in to eat in that uh, they need to know that there's a confidence that when they sit down in someone's restaurant, they're eating uh, sanitary prepared in, in equipment that, that won't make them sick, in essence. Uh, because the inspections are not posted other than sometimes on the website, um, then uh, we had a, a public sort of an outcry as we need more transparency to find out about restaurants uh, and the safety that they have. So. Over two years, we developed what we call this placard system. Um, a green placard means that you have passed your inspection. 
uh, yellow placard, which will probably pertain a very small percentage of restaurants. We have a lot of responsible restaurateurs and businessmen in this community. They understand that if they own a restaurant, they need to keep it safe and clean for their uh, patrons. And so uh, we feel that this yellow placard that will be posted and give a description of uh, the problems that might occur in a restaurant under a 36 percentile. There's a 100 percent as you start, and as you have critical violations or problems in it, uh, there's a point system. As the points add up, if you fall below 36 percent, you're automatically in jeopardy. Uh, but you're also putting your patrons in jeopardy. So uh, this yellow placard would mean that there are corrections that needed to be made and need to be made quickly. And so that'll be posted. And that'll give the patron an idea that this restaurant, this particular restaurant, hasn't been up to par in its cleanliness and its safety and its kitchen equipment. So that warns a consumer that, no, they may not get sick in that restaurant, but that there's, uh, let's say he's, he's not a, that owner at that point in time is not a responsible owner, uh, and I feel that percentage will be very, very small in our community. But I think it's important that, and there'll be, of course, a red placard, which will mean you're closed. So that, that in essence, is what we're doing. It's, it's a safety feature that has been prompted by petitions and outcry from the public. I believe the um, Francis Nelson Health Center this year has begun taking in new patients for the first time in several years, and they've hired new doctors. Uh, are, is the public health district and Francis Nelson similar in many oh, ways? Well, uh, the public health district ha has contracts and agreements with many, many different uh, a, um, entities. Uh, the public health district is an, is an oversight to uh, almost uh, a, a dozen different types of problems when it comes to either foodborne illness, when you have inspections, but you have uh, public health uh, servicing communities mm -hmm. for immunization, uh, for protection of uh, their children. We, we work from all different aspects of safety uh, in our community. And the public health district, and as you know, this is my first seat on this board and really didn't immerse myself in the public health district because I always felt they did a great job. Um, but now that I'm on the board, uh, I get a chance to see how they actually work on a day-to-day -day basis. And there's nearly, uh, in any given year, maybe over 40,000 residents that we handle in this area. So um, uh, we have um, a very unique uh, obligation uh, for the safety and security uh, of our community. Uh, I also want to say that uh, we've just rebuilt our parking lot. And I was able to secure, after a six-year conversation I just got on the board, a bus stop at the facility for the first time. Uh, before, the buses were stopping on North Neal Street, and uh, our patrons had to walk across Neal Street in the cold and the winter. And so um, I, I negotiated with the MTD, and we have our first bus stop at the facility. And, and I would ask that any patrons who uh, use our facilities on Kenyon Road, that uh, the way to get that bus stop to come into the uh, parking lot is to ask the bus driver, tell them you need to be, uh, you need to be let off at the uh, Champaign Urbana Public Health Facility. What about the new Champaign County? What projects were being worked on this year on the, in the highway department on the, in Champaign County? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we've had a discrepancy. Uh, over the past number of years, uh, the uh, IDOT, which funds, state funds, highways, uh, has, uh, in my estimation, shortchanged District 5. We're a District 5 here. We run six counties. Uh, highways that run through our counties are I-57, I-74, uh, I-39. Uh, we have um, uh, 72 uh, and 55. And we have to keep them up. And the state provides funds over a six-year period, a distribution of funds. Uh, District 5 was given $175 million for this six-year period. We felt that was, well, let me put it this way. The next closest district, which has the similar type of demographics, received $339 million. So that immediately 
sort of uh, brought us to the attention is why are we so low in funding versus our next closest district in the state of Illinois. And I have been going back and forth with IDOT with letters uh, to uh, Ann Schneider, who is the uh, Secretary of Transportation at IDOT, also with the governor. And um, we also uh, brought to light the, uh, the accident-prone I-57, I-74 interchange here, which is uh, a part of it is in the top 5% of accidents in the state of Illinois, 335 accidents and a number of fatalities. Because when you get off 57, moving at 65 or 70 miles an hour, coming in is a very short exchange that moves from one area to another. And so um, we have been um, very focused on improving our highways here, as we do in the county, because we also uh, work with county roads and budget those. Uh, and we have one of the best county road systems uh, in the state. Uh, we, were, we felt that not enough dollars were being spent in this area for the upkeep of these highways. And so uh, we have been and still are in conversation. In fact, I'm about to send out another letter in response to uh, a small movement by IDOT to improve this intersection. So um, uh, we're, we're working on trying to uh, increase funding for this area. We're going to now talk about the Champaign County Housing Authority. When are the new properties for the Housing Authority going to be available? Well, I, I don't sit on the board, and I don't uh, work with day to day with the Housing Authority. Uh, that's their uh, responsibility. Uh, the responsibility of the chair of the county board under an intergovernmental agreement is to choose um, on an annual basis one commissioner. And that's my responsibility. The city of Champaign, city of Urbana chooses two. And so and then there's a resident commissioner chosen and approved by the county board. Uh, and so uh, their day-to-day -day operations are not part of my responsibility. Um, we do get reports uh, on an annual basis um, only if we ask for it. But they're an autonomous organization. And so they, they work through federal grants. And, and the Federal Housing Authority as well as State Housing Authority. Give us an update of what's going on with the um, Champaign County Nursing Home. Well, I, I'll tell you, things are looking better. Um, I'm, I have been on the board for five years. Private, pre previously to my, my tenure on the county board, there were a lot of problems at the nursing home, particularly financial problems. Uh, and so uh, the county board at that time, uh, we decided to put a the board of directors in place at the nursing home, uh, which and bring on a management company called MPA. Uh, this is a company that had expertise in managing nursing homes around the state, and we felt that we needed someone with that type of experience, uh, financial background, and relationships with hospitals uh, to put us on a, a solid base. And they've done just that. Uh, over the past five years, our census have risen. Our reputation has become, uh, I would say, one of the best in the county. Um, understand that we're a public nursing home providing services to all in Champaign County. Now, in many private nursing homes, they don't take Medicaid. Some don't take Medicare. They're almost all private pay. We're a government entity. We, we accept all Medicaid and Medicare and private pay. And we are a transparent operation. Because we're government operated, everyone knows if there's a problem. Now, every nursing home has problems. Every business has problems. But we address those immediately. And so uh, the difference is that you don't hear about it from a private nursing home, but because we're a public nursing home, you hear about that, that situation. And so uh, there is a, sometimes a perception that there are problems at our nursing home. But those are corrected if there are problems. Any nursing home that has almost 200 residents and over two, almost 200 employees uh, have to have some types of challenges. But we're working on them immediately financially. We're going to break even or have some, a small profit this year. Uh, but that's our goal. Our goal is not to make a profit. Our goal is to satisfy the community's needs for a senior citizen operation that um, will will benefit our, our residents 
in a way that doesn't cost them any more than it would be necessary to cost. And so we, we keep a very tight rein on finances and we keep a tight rein on making sure that the facility gives the service at the needs of our community. What is going on now with the Champaign County Jail? All right. Um, this has been an ongoing study for the last 15 months. Well, the jail has been a problem for years. Uh, the reason being is the culture of incarceration has changed. Back 35 years ago when we built the downtown jail, uh, the goal was have jail cells, put in a person in the jail, lock the door, and you were done. Um, that sounds simplistic, but it, it, in essence, that's what the downtown jail was used for. Today, the culture is different. Uh, a jail now becomes almost like a nursing home or a medical community. You have mentally, mentally ill uh, incarcerated there because the state, and in many cases, have cut back on the funding for mental health. So what do you do with someone who has a mental health problem who's committed a crime instead of putting them into a facility that might help them from a mental point of view? They put them in jail. But you can't just put them in a jail cell with others. So you have to have an isolated section for mental health. You have to have a psychologist on board. You have to have nursing. You have to have medication. And so a jail has become more than just a place to house uh, criminals. It's, it's become a, a, a culture of change. And the jail was never set up for that. There were corners cut back when we first built it. And so uh, it's a facility that we're now looking at taking the women who are incarcerated in the downtown jail, moving them out to the satellite jail. About 15 months ago, uh, we hired a company called ILPP to give us a needs assessment, an entire broad program, a report on our entire justice system. How can we reduce incarcerations for those that are nonviolent, uh, for those that are being placed in, in our in our prisons and jails because of mandated state legislature um, uh, edicts to the justice system, uh, taking uh, discretion away from judges uh, on items like uh, maybe traffic offenses or DUIs and things of that sort. Uh, and so we're working now. We've received our report. We have instituted a number of changes uh, in the justice system uh, helping to uh, pre-trial programs, and now we're working on a RFP for a, a re-entry program. What is a re-entry program? A re-entry program, at any given time in Champaign County, there'd be four or five hundred um, parolees. Uh, but they come back with a bus ticket, and they come back with no opportunities. Uh, so what happens is, uh, to find that to, to survive, they re-criminalize and we call recidivism, and they, they're sent back to prison. And every day costs us tens of thousands of dollars a year for an incarcerated person. So we're going to put into place a reentry program that will give them a, a guideline and help to uh, reenter uh, uh, the society, uh, connect them back with their families, hopefully get them a job, give them some training, if we can reduce recidivism, we can save millions of dollars. And so we're willing to put in, and we, we placed aside in our budget about $200,000 for reentry and pretrial programs, mental health programs. Uh, the mental health board is now working with uh, the sheriff and the justice system in working out how we can move mental health patients into a, a, a better facility. So we're working on uh, a whole entire group of programs to help not only keep our, our, our community safe and safer, uh, but also to uh, give these parolees who are nonviolent, uh, who uh, want to re-enter our community as good citizens, uh, but they need to have options to do that. And so that's one of the things that we're working on. And as you can see, we, ha we, we have our fingers into a vast array of issues uh, at the county level. And so uh, I've always felt that that was very satisfactory to me to help to improve uh, our community. Do you see any expansion of either the downtown jail or the satellite jail? 
forthcoming in the near future? Uh, I don't see us doing any, renova any renovations, maintenance perhaps on the downtown jail. Uh, but I think we need to move uh, all of our incarcerated uh, uh, people into one facility. And that facility, I think, will be the satellite jail. Right now, we're working on founding a way to move the 30 or 40 women prisoners from downtown out to the satellite jail for, uh, uh, well, let, let's put it this way. It would be a safer environment for them and a safer environment for our correction officers because the downtown jail is not a safe type of situation. Um, and so we're, gonna, we're working on moving the first the women out uh, to the satellite jail. Will there be a need for an, an expansion of the satellite jail? Perhaps. But right now we have about 100 empty beds. The, the criminal justice system through the state's attorney and the public defender and our justice system and our judges and our sheriff's department have worked in concert together to try and lower it through probation, through uh, diversion programs, uh, lowering our jail incarcerations. And we've done that. Mm -hmm. Over the past 10 years, um, uh, we've lowered our uh, incarceration rate considerably. Uh, so there have been a lot of uh, efforts made by uh, Julia Reitz, the state's attorney, Randy Rosenbaum, the, the public defender, and, and Chief Judge DeFanis, uh, uh, Sheriff Walsh, to, to make sure that uh, our system is running and there's a great cooperation between all of these entities to do just that. Do you see in the next year, do you see any major things that are going to happen in Champaign County? Well, I can only tell you that uh, we sometimes get blindsided or surprised by issues that come up. Uh, one of my main focuses are, is on expansion of wind farms. Um, we need additional revenue. There's no doubt. Um, revenue has been uh, lacking from the state. Uh, they're cutting back. The federal government is cutting back. We just had a sequester uh, that has affected our, our Head Start and Early Head Start. I'm the superintendent of the Head Start Early Head Start programs in Champaign County. Uh, we lost a quarter of a million dollars. We had to lay off nine teachers, and we had to remove 44 children from early education. Um, and we don't seem to see any movement uh, at the federal level in, <clears throat> in bringing back these funds that will put these children in harm's way later on. Um, if they can't get into kindergarten and, and be equal with those who have been in preschools because they can afford it, uh, it it's going to hurt uh, these youngsters down the road. Uh, so this is not just local but national as well. So I've been working with that. I'm working with uh, the Amtrak people to try and, and improve our Amtrak service from, uh, from Champaign to Chicago. Uh, we only have three trains going out a day. Now if a businessman wants to work in Chicago uh, and do a luncheon uh, meeting, he has to wait till 7 p.m. to get a train back. Now that's not inducive of good business travel between here and Champaign. We're also looking at high-speed rail. I'm sure I'm not going to be around when high-speed rail, if it ever does come to Champaign County, but can you imagine how, uh, what an economic driver it would be to be able to go from here to Chicago in 35 or 40 minutes? Uh, it would make a tremendous difference to this area economically. And wind farms, I'm now working with a, a, a Spanish wind farm company to hopefully bring another 150 to 200 turbines. Each turbine when taxed, and of course putting up a development like that costs nothing to our taxpayers, uh, the developer handles all of the finances, we receive about $14,500 per turbine per year in taxes. We already have 30 turbines here. Uh, I, I'm, I'm proud to say that I was one of the, uh, the key leaders on bringing the wind farm ordinance to Champaign County. We now have 30 wind farms in Champaign. Uh, 30 turbines. We'll be taxing them starting January 1st at $14,000 plus per year uh, per turbine. That's revenue coming in. That's what we need. Revenue coming in without raising property taxes. And so um, I'm working on expanding that. Solar energy, biomass, working with the university on an authority between the university, the community, and the airport. We have one airline right now, American Airlines. If we get a phone call tomorrow saying because of this now, this combination of American Airlines and, and U.S. Airways, 
uh, they're going to cease operations at Willard, we have no airline. We only have one airline going out. It doesn't go anywhere other than Chicago or Dallas, so you have to connect. We're looking for a viable airport which help not only the University of Illinois because of their researcher and grants, um, but also the community for economic development. You need a viable airport. That's just some of the things we'll be working on over the next year. What is the responsibility of the Champaign County Regional Planning Commission? Well, uh, the Regional Planning Commission is a, uh, an entity of the Champaign County Board. It was created by the Champaign County Board. And, and what it does is it, it, it also runs the Head Start program. Uh, uh, I work with Cameron Moore, who is the CEO, uh, on a daily basis. I work with Catherine Leffrick, who is the, uh, the department head, the head of the program management part. Um, I work with them on a daily basis to make sure that uh, the children are in the facilities that are safe and that they're, they're learning. And I get reports because I'm, I'm on the policy board of the, uh, of the Head Start, Early Head Start uh, program. And so uh, on a monthly basis, we're given a report on the, uh, on, on the improvement of the, the children as they go through school. Uh, we work from infancy all the way up to uh, to kindergarten. Uh, the uh, RPC also has uh, the Workforce Investment Act. I'm the chair of that policy board. Um, that is a four-county program for training and retraining of unemployed uh, youth uh, to, to put them together with the proper training for the business opportunities that are out there today. Uh, that has changed. There are many businesses who need employees. The problem is you can't find trained people to fit that job. And so what we're doing is we have a number of different programs, all the way from nursing to computer science, to get them trained to be able to effectively work with business and get a good paying job. So that's just some of the things. Uh, RPC has a $25 million budget, and we work in many areas of getting grants and working to improve economic development here in Champaign County. Do you see my my final question here. Do you see any big businesses coming to Champaign County in the near future? Well, I certainly hope so. Um, the cities uh, also are autonomous in working with economic development. Mayor of Urbana here, uh, Mayor of Champaign, and the county board, and myself, we're always looking for new businesses like the wind farms. Now, that's a business. That is economic driver. But I'm also cognizant of the fact that agriculture here in Champaign County is a prime driver of economic development. We have the best prime farmland in Champaign County in the world. And that's not a cliche, that's the truth. And we have developed through research at the University of Illinois and in, co in coordination with the Farm Bureau, which I work with on a regular basis, and our, our farmers in building our, our yields to a point where uh, we're able to not only use it for domestic use, but for exporting as well. So we have a number of different, uh, obviously, our fingers are in a lot of different pots. What are the major issues that you feel that could come up with the Champaign County Board this coming year and in the various communities within Champaign County? What well, we have an election coming up. Uh, half the board will be up for re-election if they decide to run again. I'm running again. That will be one uh, that will take some of our time away from, from doing business. Um, I feel that I, I've earned another term. Um, personally, I have uh, I put in a lot of time. I, I, my wife always thought that this job as chair would be a part-time job. Uh, it hasn't worked out quite that way. Um, uh, I'm in uh, Brookings Administrative Center every day. Uh, the items and issues that come out, come to my desk varied, extensive, and as you see, we've talked about a number of different issues, but there are many more issues that come to my desk. Um, but I think that I, I've earned another term simply because I've done work and accomplishments for this county uh, and for the residents uh, in keeping them safe and having a better quality of life. Would you like to discuss anything else? Well, um, <laughs> I, I guess as a politician, I could spend another hour talking. 
But I, I think that we've covered the, the main points of what's taking place right now. Uh, I'm sure down the road when we get new issues, I think I'd be happy to come back and we can discuss those as well. Al, thank you very much for appearing on In Focus. It's, it's a pleasure. Uh, I enjoy doing it. My guest has been Al Kurtz, chairman of the Champaign County Board. I'm Brian Jackson. Thank you very much for watching In Focus. Um, this is the final In Focus program. Um, from two in 2011, we brought you the program Let's Talk, and from 2011 to the present, we brought you the program In Focus. I want to thank the guests on Let's Talk and In Focus, and we hope that we have brought you the major issues that affect our surrounding communities. Also, I want to thank Urbana Public Television for letting me come in to do these programs. And a special thanks go to station manager Jake Schumacher and producer and cameraman Jason Leggett. I'm Brian Jackson. Goodbye, everybody.